Since sorting out my 1997 Mercedes SL600 on the cheap, I've been enjoying this car way too much. In my twisted mind, I believe this V12 powered Roadster is the closest I've come to automotive perfection for under $10,000, as there is so much to love about this car. Still, even though I've totally fallen for this aging Mercedes, I still have a few gripes, which combined with the fact that I'm a total idiot, really, you all know this, it has me leaning towards selling this noble beast. Did I just say that? And if you'd rather read my very long love letter to this car, link below is an article on autotrader.com slash oversteer where I do exactly that. Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely a Mercedes fan and, and you don't come here for unbiased reviews on Mercedes cars because I like them a lot. Even if you're not a Mercedes fan, it's really easy to love this car. And the one thing that starts my love affair with this SL is its importance. Each successive generation of SL was replacing an icon. And I believe this car, the R129 chassis as it's called, was the last to surpass its previous generation of SL. But really, it wasn't too hard to achieve this by the late 1980s, as the old R107 model SL had been produced spanning three decades. Now by this point it was like Mercedes was building brand new antique cars, so the bar was set pretty low. Despite this, the new generation of SL shocked the world. This car, not just because of its wholly original design that defined a new decade of Mercedes, but also because of its technological marvels. The interior is where some of the biggest advancements were made, and the most impressive part to me is the seats. The older Mercedes seats with their manual adjustments and tufted upholstery didn't look much different from a 1920s Mercedes, but the seat in this SL600 looks more like it belonged in the space shuttle. The floating headrest automatically adjusts its height based on how far back the seat is. It assumes you're taller the further back the seat is, and the seat mounted safety belts adjust in concert with the headrest as well really smart. The door panels, they're much thicker than previous generations, and despite the lack of gadgets or infotainment systems in this interior, it still looks totally modern even to this day. Now the only thing that dates this car is the old car phone right here, but it's really cool. It's hidden behind a panel kind of like James Bond's Aston Martin DB5, and this is a Cold War era missile launcher. Now the inline six and V8 cars are just fine, but I feel like this car really didn't come alive until they put the V12 in it starting in 1993. Now this engine is beautiful. It looks like a pipe organ. It's, it's, it's a sculpture, a work of art, but it isn't the only thing that was advanced in this car, technically, and more in the interior. The already really nice quality interior was improved even more with a stitched leather dashboard and available two-tone perforated leather seats and a wooden steering wheel in later models. Additionally, the SL600 came standard with ADS, an active hydraulic suspension system that matches the smoothness of the V12 engine. It's, it's fabulous. In the standard setting, it feels like a land yacht, but if you want it to firm up a little bit, if you're wanting to drive on a spirited road, you hit one button and the car is pretty decent in the corners as well. So you get the best of both. It's also height adjustable. So if you come up on a steep curb, you can hit a button and raise the whole suspension a couple of inches. Now this is something other exotic makes didn't start doing until 10, 15 years later. Ferrari, Lamborghini. Let's hear it. Oh, that's nice. So smooth. And actually, I better put the top up because it's been raining on stuff for the past week. A light drizzle. Go. Go, go, gadget top. Nice. Nice. Makes very abrupt noises, but that's what it's supposed to do. Hey, hello. Anyway, back to the V12. It was a first for Mercedes to put a V12 in anything, starting with the new S-Class and this SL in the early 90s. But the V12 also had a lot of advancements, things like a coil-based ignition system, way more reliable than the old cabin rotor and the uh, easy yell stuff of the previous generation SL and S-Class that, that tended to go nuts. Also, finally, we got an electronically controlled transmission. Before this, Mercedes transmissions were controlled by a conglomeration of 
of vacuum lines. It looks like a bowl of spaghetti under there to control things throughout the car. Now, this does have some vacuum controlled stuff as well. I think the door locks are still vacuum controlled. But finally, the transmission had an actual brain behind it, the computer that knew a lot better when to shift. And this is the first Mercedes, wow, <laughs> this is the first Mercedes that you could really call quick because it had 389 horsepower, but also because it could run through the gears. Before this, uh, yeah, they're all, they're all slow. But the thing about it is the engine is so smooth and quiet and accelerates so linearly, almost like an electric motor, that you just don't notice how fast you're going. You could stomp it and feel very comfortable. It doesn't really pin you back in your seats, but it does pull really hard. And, and before you know it, you're going 100 miles an hour and you have no idea. Now, I'm not the type of guy that likes to go 100 miles an hour all the time. Really, I, I don't. I kind of drive like a grandpa. But it's not because I'm scared of being in an old convertible. Really, this thing is super safe. It has airbags, ABS, trash control, crumple zones, and it's kind of mixed with the crumple zones with this bank vault feeling of construction. So I feel super safe. Additionally, I'm in a convertible and I don't have to worry about being decapitated because of this pop-up roll bar. And really, I think it's pretty. It's one of the few cars with a factory roll bar that I actually like the way it looks. But even if you don't, you can fold it down right here and it'll still protect you from getting your head lopped off because it has a gyro inside that detects a rollover and it'll pop up at the speed of an airbag if you end up rolling this thing. Really cool. Now, as you saw earlier, this hydraulic system also controls the soft top operation and it's really smooth and neat, even though it is a little loud, but it's one of the few items in this car that uh, does tend to fail quite a bit. Still, it's a lot more serviceable than the next generation of Mercedes SL, where it's that hardtop transformer-y looking retractable hardtop, and, and really, this car is, is way better. Way better. And to show you what I mean, we can go to Hoopty Fleet headquarters and view my collection of Mercedes, uh, a gaggle of Mercedes. What would you call a, um, um, I have a, I have way too many Mercedes in here. You'll see. What a gaggle. And there's even more. There's one over here, a 2003 CL600 with the twin turbo V12. It's tuned by Rintec. Puts out over 600 horsepower with the tune. It's insane, but it's a perfect example of things that went wrong with Mercedes of the modern era. Now, it's not just the infinitely increased electronic complication with this car that really makes me not like it as much, nor is it the dip in quality that people say happened in this, what they call the dark ages of Mercedes around the year 2000, but it's also just the design. It's, it's very bland. It really doesn't stand out. Now this car is pretty, but it's definitely not my SL600. You see that car and there's no mistaking it for anything but a Mercedes. And this thing from the side just kind of blends in. But it's nice, don't get me wrong, especially since I'm selling it as well. 69,000 miles, 12 grand. Uh -huh. I'm a horrible salesman. So I should be thrilled to have such a nice example of the car of my dreams for such reasonable money and want to keep it forever, but I'm not. The biggest annoyance with me comes from the lack of a rear seat. And if I'm committing to a two seat roadster for the rest of my life, it needs to be way more fun to drive than this thing. A Porsche 911 is a much better choice for me in the sports car department, since it's still comfortable and, and engaging to drive and fun, and it has an acceptable rear seat for my five-year-old daughter. If I'm looking for the ultimate luxury experience, I have my Rolls-Royce Phantom. It's, it's incredible. And as far as my Mercedes addiction goes, I already have my 1995 Mercedes C36 AMG, and it is a ton of fun. It's also in this perfect sweet spot of Mercedes for me. The styling, similar language, similar technology. It's, it's a really cool car that is about half the price of this car. I also have my 1985 Mercedes 500 SL, and it's a really nice car. It's, it's older, so it's a lot needier. There's always something broken, but it has a rear jump seat. My kid can ride in the back of this car, and we can go cruise with the top down. So when somebody offered me $15,000 for this SL600, I, I jumped at it. Jumped. Yeah, sure, all yours. 
It's been a very long time since I flipped a car for any kind of decent profit, but the downside is once I sell it, I can't think of a more impressive car that would replace it for the same money. I guess I could invest the cash, but more likely I'll end up spending it several times over on something incredibly stupid. Maybe I already have. Thank you for watching.